So good afternoon, all the participants. So very pleasant good afternoon. I welcome you all for the uh, the last session of uh, the second day uh, FPP program. So on this occasion, I am very happy to welcome Dr. Raymond Hector for this uh, uh, Atel FPP program. So good afternoon, Professor. I welcome you. So Thank on behalf you. of all the para participants present here. So may I now invite Ms. Ruby Freya to introduce Dr. Raymond Hector to the uh, audience. Thank you, ma'am. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. M. N. Hegde, uh, the speaker for this session. He's a professor in PG Structural Engineering, Dr. Ambedkar Institute of Technology, uh, Bengaluru. He has done his M. E. Structural Engineering from University Vishweshwaraya College of Engineering and PhD from IIC Bangalore. Uh, his achievements include um, he being the uh, coordinator of TechQuip 2 project, uh, which was World Bank funded project. He has organized AICT sponsored national seminar, uh, an international conference on development of smart cities and various other workshops and other programs. So he had been a uh, former secretary, Indian Concrete Institute, uh, KBC, and then former chairman of ACCEI Bangalore Center, uh, member board of governors of Instruct Bangalore, and also an executive committee member in uh, Indian Society for Earthquake technology. So he is a member of various professional bodies and uh, active in various national level programs. His areas of research include uh, FEM in stochastic structural dynamics and earthquake engineering, system identification, structural health and damage assessment of civil infrastructures, life cycle energy cost of buildings. He has guided uh, five PhD candidates and he's also um, published a lot of papers, 22 in national uh, conference proceedings, 30 in international proceedings, and 34 in international journals, and nine papers in national journals. He is also a reviewer, a reviewer at American Concrete Institute Journal, and he has also received two best paper awards and written two books and one chapter in a book published by Springer. So he has delivered many uh, lectures also, including uh, covering the topics of repairs and retrofitting, smart sensors, failures of structures, um, skills in construction, etc. So very happy to uh, welcome you here, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for a nice uh, introduction. At the outset, I thank the organizers, particularly Dr. Kumuta, the HOD of Civil Engineering, SVC for uh, inviting me to make a presentation before all of you. Uh, again, I thank you one and all, and I thank all the participants for uh, registering and uh, making use of this uh, facility. And I am, uh, today I am into a topic, and I will be delivering uh, some uh, uh, developments and how this uh, uh, sensitivity analysis is being used for the health of the structure uh, using uh, particularly stochastic finite element uh, method. Uh, the, we are uh, looking into the performance of the structure based on the sensitivity analysis. So whenever uh, some problem arises, civil engineers have to be blamed because uh, we take care of the design, construction and maintenance, etc. I just start with one uh, simple example of uh, what has happened, uh, particularly in Bangalore, uh, where uh, there is a huge traffic, and one one of the flyovers has shown some distress, a small hole because of the heavily loaded truck moving on the uh, uh, the flyover. There was a dent or a, a fracture in the slab, a crack, and then it was just opened. It was opened, and the, you know. The issue was, uh, it was a small hole, of course, but uh, the consequence of this, uh, the failure of this has led to uh, the unavailability of the service for a long time, about six months. The BBMP, Bangalore Met uh, Metropolitan uh, this thing, uh, Administration has taken seven, uh, six, almost six, seven months to repair and uh, they have invested they have about 70 lakhs for a six feet by four feet uh, open opening that which they have made and uh, you see the consequences of that and uh, the cost of repair and there is a huge economic loss 
and human life is also in danger. Therefore, failure cost is very huge and uh, whatever may be the problem in civil engineering infrastructure. And uh, you see another picture uh, which I am showing there, projecting. And in Japan, see, the, there was a large uh, uh, failure, like uh, crack and uh, subsidence of uh, highway. And uh, they could repair it in, uh, in just two days and make it ready for the people to use it. Of course, there are several uh, administrative problems in India and, uh, and there may be easier uh, way of doing things in other countries. But uh, the problem with this is the consequence of the distress. Whenever a failure occurs, a lot of people say the entire system is at fault. The questions are, what ails the system? Are there no solution? Who will take the initiative? These are the important questions which we everyone has to uh, uh, question and then answer, try to find the answer for that. The problem with the world is that the intelligent people are full of doubts. While the stupid ones are full of confidence, they carry out the work without bothering about the consequences and the causes of the failure of the structure or whatever. Therefore, we have to begin with the end in mind. Our ancestors and uh, uh, they have built uh, several structures without computer, without knowledge of uh, softwares and computation facilities they could build uh, important uh, monumental structures and with so much of symmetry and uh, so much of uh, 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 perfectness. See, you can see the plumb uh, over the Shivlinga, how perfectly they have erected this uh, entire uh, structure. See, so many structures which are built uh, centuries ago, they are still standing without any distress, except that there were some uh, attacks or some such uh, unwanted uh, uh, attacks on the structures. Otherwise, all the structures are safe and performing well. We are all, we are not so bad. We are, we have developed. We have used several technologies. We are building taller and taller construction because of various other uh, te construction techniques, methods, and facilities which are available to us. Since, because the land value is very costly, we are going taller and taller buildings so that uh, people can uh, make us uh, do business inside the being inside the city there are several structures of course i'm just uh, uh, giving some uh, uh, flashback to the what is happening there then we are into precast construction where uh, entire uh, building unit can be constructed and uh, transported to the site and erected we are into we are into prefabricated uh, construction and we are also into large panel precast constructions where wall panels, beam, uh, slab panels, and uh, beams, staircases, all those things can be cast elsewhere in the uh, factory or some sheds in a controlled environment. And then they can be brought into the site and then assembled, and uh, uh, there, which can cause less pollution, saving in material, uh, control of quality, etc. Similarly, the modular uh, modularization, some identical uh, structures uh, or uh, can be assembled or uh, the modularization can take place like hotel buildings, hospitals and uh, hostels and then many other structures where uh, many compartments are almost identical then you can go for modularization. We are also well advanced in the technology and we can build uh, flyovers and bridges beautiful bridges, flyovers, and we are also into tensegrity structures, newer materials, and then we are into pre-engineered construction where the higher, bigger buildings can be constructed with, uh, with a shorter notice where things can be uh, pre-engineered and uh, uh, then they can be brought into the site and assembled and you get the things ready. Similarly, we, can, we, can, we are into many type of steel structures, large stadiums and then uh, interesting structures. Then uh, nowadays we see a lot of uh, structures like this where uh, the flyovers or uh, bridges are built with uh, segmental construction, precast segmental cellular con con concrete constructions where each segment is transported to the site and uh, with a launching uh, girder you can uh, 
assemble them and then you can do the pre-stressing and uh, you see that the high tension cables are uh, uh, available there and then uh, we can go for pre-stressing and then keep the things ready for use and uh, just a little bit beyond that so we are assembling various segments and uh, and they are though they, it looks like a continuous beam structure it is strictly speaking it is uh, simply supported uh, it is designed and constructed as simply supported girder where uh, all these segments are being assembled and the pre-stressing force is being applied like uh, as you can see the librarian carrying the books lo load where the compression there is on the books pre-compression and extra load also can be put on that and this is not happening uh, this is uh, the usual scene in the library and uh, this is what is called uh, pre-stressing pre and this concept is being used here and uh, we are into the large span structures and with the mechanization has happened over the centuries and over the years and then uh, it has replaced the hard labor which you could uh, see earlier more machines and better uh, quality control new techniques high speed and cost a little bit higher but uh, uh, in general uh, in general uh, over the co completion of the product uh, project you can see that you'll be saving in a uh, lot of things and the cost can be minimized less pollution is another issue then we are into that uh, we have tower cranes and we have climbing formworks and we can build taller and taller structures with uh, moving uh, with lesser movement of the material uh, the components and the materials and then regarding the farmer technology, those days of ugly wooden farmer is being replaced by steel and aluminum farmer. And uh, then now into plastic farmer. And how you see how people can move freely and uh, comfortably, uh, though the construction is happening uh, on the, over the head. See, the people can move and you can have a better finish to the structure where uh, you can avoid uh, extra plastering and the finishing, etc and you can build uh, structures that the entire house as a one unit and you can avoid plastering you can directly go for painting you can show some architectural features and you, this can be applicable for mass housing and things like that okay now we are into modern construction technology where uh, uh, we have several m's coming in there money ma men money material machinery methods management of projects like monitoring etc and uh, where we have we know several several advantages are there men are being replaced by machineries and money is uh, luckily money is readily available these days money is not a big big issue the material is a problem scarce city of material better quality of material is not available alternatives are always there and uh, methodology you can have several methodology you can use methodology and uh, management of project has come in a big way where the projects are to be monitored and managed and uh, completed well in time and for all this engineers are to be trained engineer supervisors and construction workers are to be trained to take up the job and the safety health safety environment is another big deal in all these issues with all these developments with all these uh, uh, things happening we see several distress or the failure in the structure still happening and uh, for which uh, we may not have a direct control. The cracks can happen, surface cracks, or uh, they can, internally it can show structural cracks also. The damages can happen to the bolts. The uh, uh, welding can, there may be defects in welding, and there may be corrosion problem. There may be a blast, like uh, terrorist attack or external attack on the one of the uh, columns suppose if it fails the other columns have to share the burden of that uh, column and uh, of course they will be in trouble of course and then random events like earthquake fire and then uh, bad construction anyway it is another issue and then the failures are we see that there is uh, regular failures of course we have some testing uh, 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 devices which can uh, test the strength of the materials things like that non-destructive testing has come into picture in a big way 
And finally, we, may, we are also into different types of repair techniques. We find uh, regularly, we find several failures, unfortunately. Bridges fail, flyovers fail, and then we also, this, uh, this is not new to India or uh, our, some countries. It is also, these failures are there happening world over. Say like a skywalk, there are three way. There was one skywalk which you can see. Three three skywalks are there. Were there were this building. Then what happened was, while the fabricator, though the design and uh, other things are okay, the fabricator while fabricating this has instead of taking one single uh, member there to support the skywalks, he has uh, just uh, uh, bifurcated them during welding. He has connected the, the uh, lower flyover to the higher uh, upper flyover. Upper flyover is separately connected to the uh, roof. In that process, the bolts, which uh, the nuts which they were used there, they were faulty and they could not uh, take up the extra load which were uh, supposed to be, which uh, to which it is being uh, uh, stressed. Then the bolts failed. The entire uh, Skywalk has failed, uh, fallen on the uh, lower flyover fly uh, skywalk, and finally there was a total uh, collapse of the entire skywalk, and uh, almost 150 people got killed. That happened in US in 1981. Similarly, there was another uh, incident in uh, uh, 1940 in US, the Tacoma Beach Bridge, famous bridge, which you can everybody can see in the internet. Uh, this video is being available is made available uh, here you can see you please see this video unfortunately the project engineer is there on the bridge and uh, he is uh, he is so, so he was so confident that nothing will happen to him the bridge engineer or the project engineer And this uh, bridge, uh, after uh, once it has failed, it is being replaced by a double uh, uh, twin bridge, a twin suspension bridge, uh, later in 2007. Then uh, you also see one of the buildings in Bangalore, which has, uh, of course, the earlier that uh, bridge was not designed for uh, the wind uh, forces. Unfortunately, it has collapsed due to because of the wind pressure. Now you can see one more uh, collapse here in. Uh, uh, collapse of the building in Bangalore uh, in uh, 2020. The newly constructed uh, building, which is constructed about 80 feet above, like uh, there was a uh, deep excavation uh, happening just uh, adjacent to this building. 80 feet below, they have gone. And this is a newly constructed building adjoining the construction site. has collapsed. Here, the, it was not the fault of that, uh, the building, uh, uh, the, there was no fault of that building, but the neighbor who was uh, constructing another building, he has gone uh, about 80 feet deep into the ground and he did not bother about the safety of the joining structure. And one more collapse in uh, uh, New Delhi during Commonwealth game uh, complex uh, building of uh, uh, Commonwealth game uh, village where the flyover the, because of the poor uh, fabrication, welding and other process, the skywalk has uh, fallen. Unfortunately, the event was supposed to happen after a few days and uh, it was during construction only. The entire skywalk has failed. Of course, one more uh, structure in Bangalore in 2020. The neighbor who has gone uh, to about 40 to 50 feet below uh, ground level, he did not bother about the safety of the adjoining structure and he has dug uh, for the uh, for the foundation and basement and unfortunately the newly constructed structure about four stories structure has uh, tilted and uh, did not collapse fortunately no no casualties but people were asked to evacuate and the building was demolished later see the consequence of that and cost of that then this uh, has happened in uh, 
Calcutta, West Bengal, where the canal channel uh, canal was uh, dug without bothering about the safety of this uh, structure. Uh, after some time, this uh, entire building has collapsed. You can see the collapse of the building. Of course, uh, it was on the government land only that it was uh, it was an illegal structure maybe, but still uh, the there was no casualties. The building has collapsed. Last month, uh, there was a collapse of the bridge because of the scour or uh, the failure of the uh, foundation for the uh, pillar. All these are happening and we are concerned. And in this uh, uh, process, we need to see that the structure should perform with a little bit of disturbance. They should perform and they should show that they are in, a, they are in some critical condition. If there is some warning, impending warning about the failure of the structure, then the people can be evacuated and uh, some repairs can be can happen in, in the structure. For which uh, we can uh, go for one of the concept is called sensitivity analysis, where if there is some disturbance elsewhere, then what will happen to the performance of the structure? And this in this sensitivity analysis, people can use analytical methods. They can also use softwares using deterministic uh, finite element method where uh, softwares can be used and the modeled and uh, their distress can be introduced in the modeling uh, in the modeling stage and uh, the various studies can be performed in the in during this process we need to understand that whenever we are studying the structures there are some variables involved in the analysis the basic variables are the modulus of elasticity, area of cross section, and the mass density of the material. These are considered to be basic variables. And from these basic variables, we get what are called design variables, which are called stiffness matrix, mass matrix, etc. Stiffness and mass, they come from all these basic variables. Then we have what is called response variable. In dynamics, we call them as natural frequencies and mode shapes. In statics, it is just called displacement. And then we call it bending moment, shear force, and then leading to bending stress, shear stress, torsional stress, etc. The stresses are deflection stresses, all these are responses. In dynamics, we have, we say, natural frequency, more shapes, and then uh, the response of the structure. These, uh, the relationship between design variables and response variables is better understood by what is called sensitivity analysis. Now we have to understand that the sensitivity analysis deals with a relationship between design variables and the response variable. And the response variables may be any parameter of our interest, that is output. The most direct way to perform a sensitivity analysis is to perturb one design variable. That means you disturb or vary one design variable at a time, study the change in the response variable. We cannot uh, we say if you want to identify what is happening to the structure because of one particular reason, that means you have to change that particular variable and see the response of the study. That is called response of the structure. That is called perturbation sensitivity analysis. You perturb one of the parameter and see how the response varies. Therefore, that is called perturbation sensitivity analysis. It is often convenient for the communication purposes to perturb the design variable by 10% and calculate the percentage change in the response variable. The sensitivity of the displacement, velocity, acceleration, and response variables to the design variables is also very important. Okay. Then what are design variables? Well, we have already gone through because the, because the cross-section can vary because of the formation, uh, form work may be uh, there may be some damage to the former, the cross-section uh, can change. And the corrosion is uh, one major issue where uh, the steel rods or the, the skeleton of the structure can corrode and uh, corrosion is a major uh, concern. And scaling or cracks that uh, reduces the stiffness of the structure. That means the structural parameter may vary because of the environmental uh, issues. The modulus of elasticity may also vary. Then the variation of density of the material because of improper compaction and things like that. Then the consolidation issues. 
and these design by very uh, parameters they vary because of several issues this variation and also the variation loading parameters the loads may vary in time or spatial there may be spatial variation there may be time dependent variation and then in, uh, uh, in addition to that during construction if you are not taking care of the adjoining structures or the existing structures you are going deep into the uh, deeper and deeper excavations that may affect the performance of the structure because the foundation uh, pressure bulb is getting uh, affected the sbc is getting affected because of the lateral escape of the soil and etc and the performance of the structure will be, is getting affected that is one issue next all, all of us because basically we are all teachers we conduct uh, laboratory tests on materials and uh, hello the even in uh, laboratories when you conduct uh, testing of the materials for identical specimens of steel bar loaded until failure each specimen will fail at different levels of loads different values of load that means load capacity of the bar is therefore a random quantity or a random variable in general all the parameters of interest in engineering analysis and design have some degree of uncertainty and thus may be considered to be random variables basic concepts of planning and design we are going to look into where the supply and demand are the major issues capacity resistance or supply should at least satisfy the demand that means for a structural geotechnical or mechanical engineering the resistance or capacity of the structure or the strength of the member or a collection of the members is a supply then the demand is we have the applied loads and the load combination and their effect and therefore the supply should at least satisfy the demand then only the structure will perform um, for which it is designed and constructed most of the parameters related to supply and demand are random quantities or random variables when you are talking about the random quantities or random variables we have uncertainty which is involved there uncertainty related to that randomness there when you are talking about the structural health that means you diagnose the structure what is the current state of the structure and then in prognosis in the structural prognosis you try to find out uh, what solution can be better for to so that the structure can for, perform uh, in future and uh, you can also predict the service life of the structure and this is being affected by two types of the uncertainty sources one is aleatory and the other one is epistemic um, uncertainty the aleatory uncertainty is related to luck or a chance i will come to the uh, uh, i will go a little bit of uh, the extra discussion on this later epistemic uh, uncertainty is related to the knowledge due to insufficient information epistemic, epistemic uh, uncertainty may arise about the exact values of deterministic model inputs or the distribution characteristics of stochastic model inputs and another type of epistemic uh, uncertainty is model uncertainty where the model uncertainty represents the inability of the model to accurately represent the true physical behavior of the system uncertainty due to a model maybe maybe due to three sources one is as i said lack of knowledge about the precise values of model parameters due to limiting limited data and the numerical solution errors that arise from methodology adopted in solving the model equations model form errors which arise due to assumptions and simplification made in the development of models therefore when you are using softwares you need to be very careful while modeling uh, the elements uh, because the model form errors uh, are uh, always dangerous calibration verification validations are the activities that can be used to quantify the three sources of these uncertainties when i am talking about the model form errors i will just give you one simple example 
when i just uh, when we were discussing uh, one of my friends told me that in the mtech uh, project a student has used ansi software to model and uh, uh, see the performance of the bridge structure and uh, though his model was okay or uh, the he uh, the amount of load what he has applied for testing the bridge model was you know the, it was 1 newton a bridge is a structure which is supposed to carry tons of load and you are testing the bridge structure for 1 km and uh, the boy the mtech student mtech structural engineering student was explaining his project work and his guide was there uh, defending his work and uh, the thing was the bridge model while doing the bridge model there was some error which was not properly identified the bridge was showing response for 1 newton load you see the 1 newton load how much for the bridge you see this is the issue which everybody all particularly our academicians uh, when we are interested in uh, carry out analysis and design we need to be careful about see whether the model is done properly or not next in our conventional design principle one side we can just uh, look at this picture where one side it is the strength of the materials and things like that yield strength of steel concrete characteristic strength of concrete etc which is one side the other side it has to resist the external load where we will have safety factors thing load load factors etc that means the design loads are to be resisted by the resistance which is being developed by the structure because of the material being used there then structural failures they may collapse or they may show some cracking or deflection serviceability limit states and collapse limit states are being uh, uh, as we can find in the uh, code books is 456 or is 800 these are the limit states which are being explained there whenever you are talking about the structures the structures fail down uh, fall down or fail because of the global failure or local failure the local some of the elements may fail the entire structure may fail there are two things the local failure may lead to the entire structural failure in earthquake resistant design as you are, uh, as our, all of us understand the strong strong column weak beam concept is being adopted the reason for this is suppose if one of the beams fail the structure may not have uh, may not be influenced by that failure of the uh, failure of one of the beams or beam span but one of the if one of the column fails it may adversely affect the performance of the structure therefore whenever we are designing the structure we see that the column failures are avoided that means the local failure may be a column failure that can be that should be uh, stopped so that uh, the four global failure of the structure can be prevented and uh, as we study equilibrium condition the unstable stable neutral etc where uh, that can be explained with the help of this the stable means the force is passing through the gravity things like that of course the uh, act external moment should be balanced by the restoring moment then also the structure may be stable structure will be unstable if the uh, in this case of in this position where it continues to rotate and then fail then primary modes of failure is a deformation may be due to yield and or creep it may be due to fracture static creep rupture or dynamic fatigue and it may be due to material loss due to corrosion or oxidation the building failure can be categorized into physical or structural failures due to loss of strength and next one is the performance failure that is reduction in function below an acceptable limit for all this analysis the we are because we are always comfortable with this uh, finite element method which is a numerical methods where uh, Uh, the accuracy depends on the the various factors like finer the mesh and uh, type of elements used and how to model the structure and how to the all this we are all comfortable with this uh, finite element uh, method where it can be used for both for static analysis as well as 
dynamic analysis. In static analysis, as we know, the force is equal to a uh, force is the restoring force Kx or Ku, where U is the nodal displacement, F is the nodal force vector, and uh, K is the stiffness matrix. Stiffness matrix into nodal force, uh, nodal displacement vector, unknown displacement vector is equal to nodal force vector. And uh, hence, we can find out the nodal displacements. From displacements, you can find out the venue moment, shear force, etc. by, say, slope deflection and other methods. And then you can find out the stresses, strains, etc. And then you can look into the health of the structure. This is by static method, infinite element. When it comes to dynamic uh, analysis, dynamic loading, the Kowling equation or the equation of motion is written as mu double dot t because it is a function of time, mu double dot plus cu dot plus ku is equal to f or f of t because it is a function of time, force is a function of time, it may be earthquake, acceleration or whatever load you take, it will be give you a force there. Then displacement is a function of time, the velocity is a function of time, and acceleration is a function of time. Then mu double dot is inertia force, cu dot is damping force, k is elastic force. And sum of all these forces is equated to the external force. And if you if there is no dynamic uh, action, then it is just ku equal to f. Okay, this uh, equation of motion has to be properly understood. Then uh, using this uh, equation, we solve these equations. There are different methods of uh, solution ma techniques uh, which are available. One is modal analysis, then second one is direct integration, third maybe Fourier analysis or complex response. The dynamic force response is a function of three parameters. One is structural stiffness and mass properties, stiffness, mass properties, and C is a function of K and M, okay? and which are represented by in FE model. Dynamic forces including amplitude, frequency, and relative phase angle, which are uh, there for, uh, as a response. Then we have damping in the system. Then in the dynamic analysis, the dynamic problem is actually complex. And of course, the, there is non-linearity also involved in the system. We go for modal analysis first to study the state of the structure or the system, where we conduct a free vibration analysis, where we find out natural frequencies and mode shapes. And then we also do a harmonic analysis to have the force response of the structure for sinusoidal and other uh, forcing uh, functions. Then we can also do transient, an transient analysis because the structure may be subjected to non-harmonic time varying loads like impact, blast, and the step or ramping forces like and also the random excitation like earthquake when you are doing dynamic analysis see there are different stages the solution process has different stages we have a data input we get m and d where a modal solution we are into modal solution or direct solution whatever it is then we do the free vibration analysis uh, we get a model analysis or free vibration analysis, or we can di directly go for a direct solution. Then the direct solution may be, we get the frequency response or time domain response. Then we have, suppose we are talking into uh, talking about frequency response. We are talking about harmonic response. The response may be periodic or it may be random. And if it is periodic response, we have this path, we have a random response, like the harmonic response may be periodic or random. Similarly, if our solution is in time domain, we can have a uh, time history response or response spectrum analysis. This is how we do the dynamic analysis, in uh, particularly in earthquake uh, response analysis. In that process, what we uh, do is, Basically, we start with defining the, uh, the design variables. Design variables, particularly, the we get mass matrix and stiffness matrix. As all of you understand, those who have studied matrix method and the finite element method, for a plane uh, frame element, say we'll have three degrees of freedom at each, each node, 
and we can arrest a uh, few of the degrees of freedom and we can uh, restrict some of the degrees of freedom we can say some active degrees of freedom are considered for the analysis and some uh, uh, degrees of freedom are uh, neglected like axial displacements in a beam member is generally neglected in that case instead of 6 by 6 like uh, 3 degrees of freedom at each node it will have this element the beam element will have 6 degrees of freedom and its stiffness matrix will have 6 uh, by 6 uh, size but since uh, the axial deformations are uh, neglected at both the nodes we will have only 4 degrees of freedom and with that 4 degrees of freedom we will have 4 by 4 stiffness matrix and corresponding we have a uh, mass matrix as 4 by 4 this can be derived for this uh, literature are available how to derive element stiffness matrix and uh, element mass matrix consistent mass matrix and these formulas are available where rho is the density of the material a is area l is length rho a l gives you the weight of the material like mm, uh, uh, the mass density uh, into area into uh, this l area area into l is volume okay you get this uh, mass matrix and you get the stiffness matrix and from mass matrix and stiffness matrix Uh, as per the theory we can find out the proportional damping matrix where it is equal to alpha m plus beta k where alpha and beta can be calculated we get uh, the finite element model which is being ready which is ready with mass stiffness and damping matrices then once the uh, model is ready we can do the analysis but the problem with the complex structures is we have a big uh, finite element model with hundreds of degrees of freedom and then our solution time is very high like it takes lot of computer time and many times we don't know which uh, degree of freedom will influence more and which we want to uh, influence then in that case we can reduce the entire uh, system model say with 100 degrees of freedom into a smaller model with uh, say 10 by 10 degree 10 degrees of freedom something like that i will come to that in detail there the in a spatial model we have n coordinates and n model n modes and uh, n coordinates means n degrees of freedom and then spatial models are reduced and condensed to primary or master or active coordinates some of the degrees of freedom cannot be measured like rotational degrees of freedom many times it is difficult to measure them and in some of the structures it is difficult to uh, put the accelerometer or sensors to identify the response or get the response okay therefore in such cases we can condense some of the degrees of freedom like we can reduce the uh, n degree of freedom into a uh, system with primary degrees of freedom or master degrees of freedom dynamic properties are described in terms of natural frequencies and associated mode shifts that we are all familiar then see the dynamic degrees of freedom Uh, we have large number of degrees of freedom accordingly we will have number of natural frequencies and number of natural frequencies they give number of mode shifts and you have number of mode shifts but very few, uh, first few modes are enough for any structural analysis generally people go up to say 10 modes 5 to 10 modes first mode is an important mode first natural frequency first mode and i will come to that say so when you are doing the analysis response analysis if the the excitation frequency is equal to excitation frequency of the orbiting structure is equal to first natural frequency of the structure then the resonance uh, condition takes place and the structure vi uh, vibrates violently and uh, you may not have a direct control then uh, we have several mode shifts i just want to for clarity i say the first this is the first mode first frequency and uh, more corresponding to the first frequency is this where this is the cantilever structure you have the mode shifts like this all the uh, coordinates are positive here in the second mode which corresponds to second natural frequency you have the mode shifts which passes from uh, passes the reference line here the vertical line datum line where you find that there is one node that is also called as node in the dynamics and uh, you find that there are some negative uh, offsets 
and there are positive offsets. Similarly, you go to second, uh, third mode, we have corresponding third natural frequency, you will have two nodes there, and some are positive, some are negative. And go to fourth mode, corresponding to fourth natural frequency, you have three nodes there, and few are positive, few are negative. Finally, if you study the effectiveness of all this, if you, those who have studied dynamics and earthquake resistant design, we know that the first mode has a greater influence on all our analysis. Similarly, I have shown one of the structures where the where whole slab mass are lumped at the floor level, a beam and slab mass are lumped at the floor level, and then uh, the shear building model, where you can see that the first mode will have all the things are positive, and second mode we have some are positive, some are negative. Then I was referring to the model reduction, the finite element model reduction, where sensitivity analysis can be performed on the selected degrees of freedom and selected uh, uh, parameters. In the model reduction, because the number of measurement points or the sensors or accelerometers are generally much smaller than the number of degrees of freedom in the finite element model, because the measurements, accelerometers are very costly, sensors are costly, and uh, you cannot uh, install all the accelerometer for, in, for every degree of freedom. In that case, the measurement points are uh, restricted, and we need to have a reduced model, finite element model, because uh, num, uh, KU equal to F, where uh, that uh, number of nodal degrees of freedom which we are going to identify, the degrees of freedom which we are going to identify, that should be related to the measurement points. The rotations, the rotational degrees of freedom are usually not measured, and some degrees of freedom are inex inaccessible, as I told you earlier. Then there are different reduction techniques in the analysis, Gaian reduction, dynamic condensation, system equivalent reduction expansion process, CREP, etc. They're all being developed to reduce the finite element model, large scale model into small size. Suppose I have mass matrix, a stiffness matrix and damping matrix of n by n, say hundreds of degrees of freedom, total degrees of n is total degrees of freedom. Then I select only few degrees of freedom uh, that they are called active or master or primary degrees of freedom. Then I want to reduce this mass matrix size from n by n to a by a, then there is what is called transpose matrix. T transfer, T transpose M T, where T is the matrix which we obtain, which is called transformation matrix based on Gaian reduction, dynamic condensation, or SCRP. Any one of them you can use uh, to reduce the model size, finite element model size. Then in that process, a system with n by n degree of freedom, that means a full scale model, is reduced to a smaller model with a by a uh, size. Okay. I, uh, this process can be physically understood this way. Say I have a two bay, two story structure, a frame structure. At each node, this uh, at the base it is being fixed at the foundation. No degree of freedom uh, is considered there because all they are uh, being arrested or uh, constrained to move. In that case, you will have three degrees of freedom, two translations and one rotation at every node. Therefore, you will have how many degrees of freedom? You have six nodes, six active nodes, and you will have six into three, that is 18 degrees of freedom. And then we assume that the axial deformation of the beams are neglected and axial shortening of the columns are neglected. Because that generally happens, column uh, deformation, axial uh, deformation of the column is neglected. That means vertical degrees of freedom are neglected. Then uh, axial deformation of the beams are neglected. In that process, we only we are interested in U1 and U2. They are nothing but the displacement of the floor and the roof. U1 and U2, only have two degrees of freedom. And then we have all these rotational degrees of freedom, which are being considered for the analysis. Therefore, 18 degrees of freedom model, physical model, is reduced to a degree of freedom model. Then corresponding uh, loads are P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, P8, like uh, 
P3 to P8 are rotations, moments, and P1 and P2 are the axial, uh, sorry, lateral forces. These are the dynamic uh, forces at the nodes. These are the corresponding degrees of freedom. And that is being reflected in the reduced model. Now, coming to the equation of motion, I will be a little bit of I will be into a little bit of mathematics here because all teachers we need to understand this because in earthquake engineering, some mathematics is inevitable. The equation of motion mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to f of t, where f of t is a rational force, it is a time domain force, and which is expressed as m into i into x double dot gt. That is, this is earthquake acceleration. Xg is uh, uh, x double dot g is x earthquake acceleration multiplied by identity matrix into mass matrix that gives you the earthquake force and minus because you see it always acts opposite to the direction of uh, that's inertia force it is uh, reflected as inertia force and this will be mck is for the full scale model because n by n degrees of freedom hundreds of degrees of freedom then i as i told you earlier m mass matrix k stiffness matrix c damping matrix can be obtained and we also defined uh, uh, x as displacement x dot as velocity x double dot as acceleration and uh, x double dot g as earthquake acceleration and we partition the mass matrix so, uh, or stiffness matrix and damping matrix into See, M and M is not this master's degree of freedom and slave degrees of freedom. Slave degrees of freedom is deleted degrees of freedom or inactive degrees of freedom. You are deleting some of the degrees of freedom. Therefore, M and M, like you partition the mass matrix, stiffness matrix, and damping matrix. M for master degrees of freedom, S for slave degrees of freedom. N is the total degrees of freedom. M plus S equal to N. Okay. Then this matrix can be reduced to a size called M by M where only master degrees of freedom are chosen with the help of trans transformation matrix and which is of size n by m and if you multiply that uh, with the system matrix you will get a reduced matrix and you have the reduced equation of motion in this form why reduce the model because the model size if it is smaller and we have only active degrees of freedom chosen then we have, we can have a, the measurement points those we can be select them as measurement points we can put accelerometers or sensor at those locations we can get the information for this uh, equation and once i five uh, once i substitute all those values in this smaller uh, equation of motion by expansion technique i can get the information from the for the full scale model this is a reversible process system equivalent expansion process like where we can reduce the system, bigger system to a smaller system, and smaller system to the bigger system. We can get from a smaller model, information can be developed for the full scale model. Okay. Therefore, this reduced model will help us in understanding and getting the information from the sensors or the accelerometers, and uh, we can feed them into the equation of motion and solving this equation of motion and then expanding that. To the bigger uh, problem, we can get the information for all the degrees of freedom. And the reduction scale, as I told you, there are there is Gaian reduction, there is dynamic condensation bypass, there is a CREP and etc. And how it works, you can always explore because you researchers can explore all these things. Then uh, what do you understand by sensitivity analysis uh, when it comes to equation of motion? Say I have mass matrix, damping matrix, and stiffness matrix. They are for the system. And uh, you can consider them for the damage structure. What is a damage structure? It can have a reduced stiffness or increased stiffness depending on the, uh, the uh, impact of the environment on that. Uh, that's why you have plus or minus. The delta K is nothing but the change of stiffness. Delta M is change in mass because some of the because of the cracking and then some damage, some material matter might have gone off the structure. Then mass may be reduced, and at some location, uh, proper compaction is not being done during construction. 
the density is uh, there will be a reduction in density there is smaller uh, mass uh, reduced mass or something then we have the reference as k0 m0 c0 and we have uh, the changed one as k m c etc okay k m c are for damaged k0 m0 and c0 for the undamaged structure then we apply you can apply any type of force you can apply earthquake force or you can apply harmonic force like this e to the power i omega t where e to the power i omega t is nothing but cos omega t plus sin omega t f of omega is this nothing but an amplitude and this is an harmonic force which can you can substitute here and uh, you can get the harmonic response and if you simplify this equation with uh, uh, this differentiating this uh, in the two times and substituting this and simplification on simplification you will get h of omega as a frequency response function which is a function of frequency and which is a, also a function of mass stiffness and damping since uh, there is a velocity component where uh, e to the power i omega t is there this i comes there in the solution and then therefore this h of omega becomes a complex quantity then coming to the design sensitivity analysis what we do in design sensitivity analysis see basically we need to do the structural analysis where we are varying various parameters and then we study the response change in response because of the variation in the parameter it may display sensitivity and it will also answer what if study and there may be trade off then we you may go for what is called design optimization and the optimization or the solution is found and once you understand the problem there you can update your structural model structural model here it is mck only when we talk about the structure physical structure this may be a frame or whatever when you are talking about in the analysis it is only mck okay. and all this what if questions are, will be answered by the design sensitivity analysis i'll just move on to uh, an issue where uh, design sensitivity analysis can be performed with uh, uh the accelerometer or sensors can be placed at different locations say we have a frame here a multi story frame single bay and uh, we have five five stories and we can uh, have f1 f2 f3 f4 f5 uh, maybe the forces acting at all these uh, story levels because of earthquake excitation at the ground level and the forces are transported at story level and you know the detail of analysis which will be explained by various people the accelerometer can be placed at selected locations preferably at the uh, story levels and then all this accelerometer they sense the response of the structure then coming to the uh, damage detection algorithm we have a flow chart here where the we have a system original system with m0 k0 c0 and we can find out the natural frequencies and mode shapes by the analysis we can also find out the frequency response function h0 omega for a healthy structure this is a healthy structure you can say original structure for a damaged structures md kd cd are the um, um, design parameters and they are influenced by the damages you can find out the response you calculate the response for introducing the damage in the system model or you they have from the measurement points you can get the information from accelerometer or sensors you can get the measured frequency and mode shapes displacements etc and then you can also calculate the fr frequency response function and we have from the original uh, structure with uh, all this response function we have for unhealthy structure we have the response function we can compare them and see what is the state of the structure uh, here is the diagram in this diagram uh, as i told you the damage may be introduced in the structure 
you can also use uh, instead of uh, the variation as 10 percent 20 percent things like that you can also use the derivative as variations derivative of mass with respect to design variable design uh, derivative of stiffness matrix with respect to design variables and you can introduce in the equation of motion and finally you can find out the response the frequency response function you can plot for a healthy structures the blue line indicates for an undamaged structure with m0 c0 k0 and we have the amplitude of response here at the first frequency you will have the highest peak or at the second frequency you have the next one then like the amplitude decreases because of the damping in the system higher the damping will uh, remove the uh, peaks in the response function resp uh, frequency response function and you have say 100 frequencies you will have 100 peaks you are supposed to have 100 peaks because of the damping this uh, uh, frequency response function uh, they, there will not be peaks after a number of um, after initial peaks then if you introduce uh, some reduction in the modulus of electricity or density or whatever you you are introducing the damage in the system and that can that is introduced in the mass stiffness and uh, damping matrices and you calculate the response you plot that response you will get the peaks like this the variation of this amplitude the difference in the amplitude and there may be some change in frequency also the shift uh, you can see in the shift in the frequency as well as shift in the amplitude that is called sensitivity of the system that means the change in the system response now i can rewrite these equations as m delta x dot that deltas are introduced here in the equation of motion where delta j they represent the vector of design variables so design variables are different from random variables the design variable say the variable may show some uh, deterministic variation and uh, random variable means it may have a distribution normal distribution or log normal distribution etc when i am talking about uh, the in the civil engineering structures see mass density mass can vary it can increase or decrease but area of cross section may increase or decrease or the variation is are there and the modulus of elasticity can also vary but there are uh, let's see you, can, you don't have meaning for say negative values suppose young's modulus is negative it has no meaning density is negative it has no meaning like that see there are some quantities are strictly positive quantities then we generally you use normal uh, log normal distributions or positive distribution for the random variables here these variables are assumed to be different they are all design variables uh, their uncertainty is not considered the variation of the uh, in the parameters are considered in doing that you calculate the uh, partial differentiation as like you carry out the differentiation you have the stiffness matrix you differentiate that stiffness matrix with respect to e you will get something if you differentiate uh, with respect to a you get something you say you have uh, this you can slowly digest this you can differentiate with respect to e you can differentiate with respect to a you can differentiate with respect to uh, moment of inertia that is second moment of area because all these parameters they come in the stiffness matrix and then they give you what is called uh, the variation in the design variable like uh, uh, differences in the uh, stiffnesses in terms of design variables okay uh, then uh, they are partial derivatives we express them in terms of partial derivatives these are called deterministic finite element method similarly mass can be mass matrix can be differentiated with respect to dead load live load and then mass density etc you will uh, get uh, the uh, derivatives for that then uh, these derivatives they they are fed into the equation of motion and you can find out uh, say they come in m and k values in terms of uh, m is expressed as m naught plus 
delta m by delta j some uh, delta delta like that uh, k is equal to k naught plus delta k by delta j and delta uh, using that you can find out the frequency for frequencies for damaged structure frequencies for undamaged structure you will get uh, derivatives of the frequencies in terms of this uh, uh, mathematically you can uh, develop this equation and they work because i have done it uh, my in my research work uh, basically started with this sensitivity analysis only and do you differentiate with respect to this uh, frequencies are expressed in terms of derivatives and the mode shapes also you can express in terms of the derivatives you see the mode shapes also alphas are nothing but derivative of the shape you can see here the mode phi is mode shape is expressed in terms of derivative okay this is if you use them if you use these derivatives here in defining uh, the mass matrix and uh, stiffness matrix etc say like this derivatives derivatives are here xj xjs are nothing but design variables m and k are nothing but stiffness matrix and we get these derivatives and from that you get the derivatives of frequencies and mode shapes and then they show the measure of influence of the design variables on the structure that is called sensitivity analysis then uh, suppose you want to do it experimentally and compare with the theoretical things you can also yes, do that theoretically you can use finite element method as you have seen spatial properties are kmc etc stiffness mass and damping etc you can get eigen solution and uh, response etc then modal testing it's an experimental route where you can change the frequencies of uh, and then see the response of the structure and you can measure those responses with the sensors and uh, instrumentation and you can identify these properties and then uh, modal properties can be compared from finite element model to the experimental model and you can go for coupling and things like that there are there is a theoretical route using finite element method there is an experimental route using modal testing now as i told you this can be used for any type of this concept can be used for any type of structures say multi story building with the cladding and other things see the original frame that basic frame is called a primary structure that is called substructure one and the cladding or uh, any other structure which is being supported by this primary structure can be considered as secondary structure or substructure two similarly suppose you have a water tank or some machinery installed in the uh, higher floors of the building which will be vibrating then the entire uh, civil structure is considered to be primary structure then the uh, machinery or uh, any additional structure can be considered as secondary structure then seeing the properties of the primary structure and the properties of the secondary structure you can uh, combine them get the coupled stiffness matrix coupled uh, mass matrix like this so uh, this is uh, sub mass matrix uh, stiffness matrix for substructure one this is st stiffness matrix for substructure two and you can assemble them and there is a connectivity there and attached degrees of freedom or uh, connecting degrees of freedom similarly you have mass matrix you have mass matrix for substructure one so sub mass matrix for substructure two you can assemble them you can get the global stiffness matrix and mass matrix for the entire primary secondary structural system you can combine the system similarly this can be extended to a nuclear reactor with foundation etc where the foundation and the soil all these are have different properties the structure has got different property you can model the structure as a finite element model you can model the foundation as a finite element model you can have a structure model you have a foundation model you have a soil model you have the boundaries where there is interconnectivity influence of one system to the other system that can be studied at the interface you look at this figure where at the interface the degrees of freedom which are common to both the structures and the foundation and then you get this interface here structure soil structure or foundation you have two substructures or three substructures then you will have assembly of the stiffness matrix mass matrix and damping matrix where i refers to the interconnections or interfaces 
then this coupling technique can be done spatially as well as modal coupling technique those who are interested in studying this you can go for this modal coupling technique which is explained uh, i have given the refer in the reference and you go to the, those references and understand modal coupling technique where you can use the modal values for coupling the coupling and get the frequency response function that means finally you can get the global equation of motion then uh, we have all these uh, issues for uh, uh, you can coupling spatial coupling and modal coupling you can understand that as which i have already explained and some of the degrees of freedom can be condensed out you can substructure and uh, because in uh, every structure you will have some degrees of freedom which are not useful uh, for you in that case you can uh, delete those degrees of freedom then you get the internal degrees of freedom and connecting degrees of freedom and internal degrees of freedom only there you can reduce some of the degrees of freedom that means each substructure model can be reduced and for the uh, system system uh, model can be reduced and then assembled and deterministic uh, finite element method can be carried out but uh, it is very difficult to understand the complete uh, behavior by deterministic finite element analysis only in that case we have to go for what is called sensitive analysis using this partial derivative uh, these partial derivatives will not be give you proper picture of variation of the responses because the design variables they are actually they vary randomly therefore the uncertainties are involved in the design variables and therefore they are not called design variables they are, they are called as random variables or stochastic variables therefore the variables uh, which uh, which form the spatial matrices like stiffness damping and mass matrices they which are useful for finite element model then we call them call it as stochastic finite element method where the variability of the parameters basic parameter basic design uh, basic variables are considered therefore that is called stochastic finite element method which is also called as probabilistic finite element model and then uh, we also in the in that area we have what is called probabilistic boundary element method or wavelet based model for stochastic finite element method or spectral finite element method all these are several methods but this stochastic finite element method seems to be easier compared to other methods then what is a stochastic system we saw a deterministic system where the basic variables they vary with some percentage and uh, in stochastic means the basic variables they vary randomly and their behavior the probabilistic behavior which is uh, difficult to understand they may have spatial variation the variation may be in terms of material strength in terms of modulus of elasticity or various parameter this randomness which is considered and if that is used then we have what is called finite element method and in stochastic finite element method we write the equation of motion in this form t refers to the time variation where the displacement varies with we very spatially as well as in time domain where delta j are called the vector of random variables and this vector of random variables they vary with the mean you have mean of the random variables and you have the variation there then uh, you extend that theory you find out the sensitivity analysis where you will get eigen values as lambdas and eigen vectors as phi they are expressed in terms of taylor series where the derivative first derivative and second derivatives of these eigen values are being incorporated along with the, uh, the nominal values or the mean values of the uh, variable random variable here lambda i not is nothing but the mean value and these are the differentials with respect to the random variables delta j and uh, you have the variation of eigen values and eigen vectors in terms of random variables and expressed in taylor series and uh, then you find out the mean values of this eigen values and eigen vectors and you can also find out the variance and then the standard deviation and the method there is math, a lot of mathematics there involved i will not go into that and the variance 
is expressed in this form. From variance, you can find out what is called the standard deviation. And the der derivative of the eigen solution, uh, mathematically, it is being explained here. Some mathematics, small mathematics is there. You have to understand that there are so many parameters involved. And you have the frequency response sensitivity with the derivatives of these uh, mass, stiffness, and damping matrices in terms of the random variables are also included in x of omega. Where x of omega earlier it was omega square m minus omega square m plus i omega c plus k inverse of that was uh, x omega. But here delta j is a random variable. And all these parameters, uh, second first derivative and second derivatives of this uh, mass, stiffness, and damping matrices are coming. And the inverse of that is doing the response sensitivity. Then uh, since there is complex quantity involved, complex variable involved, we uh, partition into real and imaginary parts. And then we get the mean and variance of real and imaginary parts separately. And then plot the response rate. And I will show you one uh, example where we have, I have worked on this in for my, during my research program. A primary structure and you have a secondary structure as cladding. And we have this supporting system as a spring or something. Then uh, we have various parameters defined. And then we have used reduce model also. And then I have got a mean of the response, the real value, mean of the real values, mean of the complex values. And uh, at first frequency, I find that there is a peak there from full model and the reduced model. And of course, I have made a comparison with Monte Carlo simulation, where uh, instead of doing experiments, I have done numerical simulation like Monte Carlo simulation. And I have compared my values. And I have got for a reduced model with real and imaginary values. Uh, so I have got the response like this. This is for a reduced model that was for full model, full model with uh, analysis and Monte Carlo simulation. That is uh, analysis and experiment. Numerical experimentation is Monte Carlo simulation. And uh, with the reduced model also, I have got these responses, which are identical to the full scale model. Then uh, the standard deviation value, you can see there, uh, the blue line indicates for the full uh, analysis model. And for Monte Carlo, I have got this uh, red line because the uh, full scale model with analysis, full scale model with numerical uh, experimentation. Then from reduced model, I have got the various reduced model, I have got the responses. And uh, of course, reduced model uh, uh, behaved properly during the initial phases. And then we have some large variation there. And uh, imaginary, for imaginary component of the response, I have plotted separately. I have plotted mean values of real and imaginary uh, response uh, quantities and variance, the standard deviation of real and imaginary part of response. And I found that my uh, analysis and uh, numerical experimentation, they work satisfactorily. And when I was talking about the uncertainty, which were in there in my system, there were two types of uh, uncertainties. There are aleatory and epistemic uh, uncertainties. Aleatory related to luck or chance, like uh, the inherent uh, in nature. Epistemic uh, uncertainty, they relate to knowledge because number of uh, the theory which is being uh, uh, involved there. And uh, you, these uh, uncertainties analysis should be done, carried out. And then model uncertainty related to how well a prediction of equation of equation models, uh, the uh, equation models the test data. This model uncertainty is another set of uncertainty coming in the analysis. I will not go into the details this because of uh, the want of time. Please go through the uh, these uncertainties how they influence the uh, system response. The causes of uncertainty do uh, maybe sources maybe time statistical limits, model limits, randomness, and human errors uh, all lead to the randomness or uncertainty in the random variables. The random variables, they are expressed in terms of cumulative di distribution function or a probability density function. As you know, in uh, statistics, these are being explained. And the distribution can be plotted like this. And the histogram is a discrete version of probability 
density function. You can also plot, uh, use this histogram. From histogram, you can uh, draw probability density function. The as I told you, type of uncertainty can also be time variant or time invariant, and the variables can be linear or non-linear random variables. Okay, and uh, the these uh, uncertainties which are responsible for the variation in the responses when during the model of the structure and numerical approximation, they influence during uh, when you apply boundary condition. They may cause because of the boundary condition. And they may be due to the data input or model parameters. These uncertainties may be because of all these reasons. Then uh, the these random variables or the properties can be uh, having a normal distribution or like this, and uh, mathematically it is shown like this. And they may have a cumulative distribution like this. And they may have a log normal uh, variation, which are called non Gaussian models. If the values like uh, area of cross section, density, etc., they cannot be negative distribution. Suppose in normal distribution, some values are positive, some values may be negative. They can come mean value can be zero. But in case of uh, uh, some quantities which can cannot be negative, then you have what is called strictly positive quantities. You use what is called log normal distribution. This is a PDF and this is CDF for that. And uh, the analysis using these variations are called is called stochastic analysis, which is being done to handle uncertainties. And the response is measured in terms of uh, frequency response function, which has both the uh, real and complex parts. And uh, we find out mean and uh, uh, standard deviation of the response. And uh, these uncertainties are also uh, uh, called like this, of course. This could have been explained uh, in the beginning only because this is not required. Uh, then we have uncertainty quantification. You can find out uh, what is the type of influence of uh, uncertainty on the system. Then uh, in uncertainty quantification, you have parametric uncertainty and you have abstraction uncertainty. And we'll have probability theory or you have evidence theory. You have, you have different theories involved in this. Those who wish to go and do some research and study in this, this is always possible. And uh, we finally look into the stochastic finite element based reliability analysis of linear structures for dynamic load, where we do the regular dynamic analysis and we study, we go for the sensitivity analysis, then we go for what is called reliability analysis, and then finally we calculate failure probability. And uh, there is one uh, model, sensitivity analysis model, which is being developed by Dirk Kurgan uh, and K in 1985, which is being uh, explained in one of the books, where this uh, uh, parameter, uh, sensitivity parameter, can be uh, studied for a multi story building, a, a ground plus five story building uh, under uh, a central earthquake excitation. And uh, we have different uh, parameters, area, moment of inertia, and all those parameters, they will have uh, assumed to be log normal, having log normal distribution with uh, coefficient of variation uh, varying for different uh, parameter with different, uh, uh, this thing. Uh, for different uh, random variables, you have different coefficient of variation. For dead load uh, and live loads are also considered to be random variables. We have coefficient of variation for that. Then finally, we have uh, the sensitivity values are being calculated for such uh, that building, and uh, sensitivity index is being uh, calculated, and the uh, limit limit state value is considered to be 0 0.05, and we can find that for modulus of elasticity and uh, the yield strength, and then. Uh, uh, some of the parameters have more than 0 0.05 and they are considered to be having more uh, influence on the response of the structure. If the, the values, the sensitivity indice, indices having more than 0 0.05, the corresponding variables will have larger influence on the response of the system, that is sensitivity. Then uh, the in stochastic sensitivity analysis, we can also use what is called 
Monte Carlo simulation, which is a numerical experimentation. Okay. Uh, then we have several references for all this uh, analysis. This area is uh, more of mathematics, and uh, research in this area seems to be a little uh, uh, difficult, but still it is doable because I have worked on this. It is doable. And finally, uh, I thank you for your uh, patient hearing. And in this COVID situation, we cannot move forward or cannot move backward or cannot stay like this for long and therefore we have to do something uh, and we are lucky today that everything is available online and people are also available online and you can always interact and what I request you is you think, feel and act and just merely having webinar certificates loads of webinar certificates will not help and uh, please see that we develop an attitude for research and academic development Stay home, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful session and also the last uh, advice also. Uh, now mm -hmm. the session is open to the participants uh, for discussion. Any questions, you can post it in the chat box or you can unmute and ask. Hello, sir. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, Sayed, uh, ah, tell me, sir. Yes, uh, I want to ask uh, whether the fragility analysis comes uh, in the stochastic uh, procedure of analysis. Uh, yes, fragile analysis, fragility. Yes, 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 fragility. Yeah, comes yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's part of that only. Part of that. Some uh, some information where because the randomness is also involved there. Random. Whenever there is some randomness or uncertain quantities involved in the analysis then that can be called as stochastic analysis. Oh. Stochastic means uncertain things are being incorporated in the analysis. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any other question? Participants, any more questions? Okay, sir, I think there are no more questions. So thank you once again on behalf of uh, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering and on behalf of the participants. I thank you very much uh, for this session, spending the time here, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we'll meet tomorrow morning with a different uh, yes, uh, concept. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir.